This week we've talked about the six characteristics of all living things and the classification system. And we're going to talk really briefly on the naming system. So for the quiz, you need to know the six characteristics. Look over the notes that we did. Um, we talked about, we had it listed out and examples. So one thing you might see on the quiz is which of the following is not one of the six characteristics or maybe some matching cellular organization means and then descriptions. So it will be multiple choice. I'm not planning on it being open note. Um, and then from yesterday, what does it mean to classify things? Uh, what kinds of things, uh, what kind of groups are used to classify things? And why do scientists do this? And again, we talked about this yesterday. Scientists classify living things by their similarities. And we put things in groups and we did the activity with cards and we talked about plants and animals and fungi. And that obviously makes things easier for scientists because when they're in a group, if you say something like, oh, it's a mammal, then you know already, what do you know if I say this animal is a mammal? You know what about it? That what? Yes. Good, it has hair or fur. What else would you know if I told you it's a mammal? Yes. It's an animal. It's an animal. Yes, a mammal is part of the animal kingdom. Yes. It gives birth to live young. It's warm-blooded. Absolutely. All of those things. So it makes it easier um, to, as we group things together. Okay, those were some of our ideas from yesterday. And then we did the cards. And then we did this little bit of reading and talked about this. So um, the levels of classification, I probably won't put this on the quiz because we have not talked about it a lot yet. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Don't worry about that. The book introduces it now as we talk about living things. We will talk about it again in January when we talk about each one of the kingdoms. So just more that basic idea of why things are classified. All right, then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the naming system. When scientists name things, <clears throat> let's just look, don't worry about this stuff here. Um, Carol Linnaeus, came up with binomial nomenclature, the two-name naming system. And the whole point of this naming system is that the name tells you about the animal, and there's one unique name for everything. So has anybody ever heard of, so canis, if I tell you canis, what group of animals do you think that is? Canines, dogs, exactly, it's the dog family. So canis lupus is a wolf. Canis latrans is a coyote, and then Canis uh, vulpine is a fox. So you can see that all of these are in that same family. And then we have Felis. What do you think that is? Cat. Felis concolor, Felis domesticus. Felis domesticus is the house cat. Now, Felis concolor is a very, uh, it, it's an example they always use for, um, for talking about why we classify things and why we have these crazy Latin names. And here's the reason. So Felis con color, which I guess means with color, right? A cat with color. Anyone know what animal this is? In some places of the world, we call it a puma. In other places, we call it a mountain lion. It's also called a cougar. All of these things are common kind of regional names for the same animal. But if you look at the scientific name, Felis concolor, you know that we're all talking about the same thing. So that's why we do uh, the naming system. And this is the genus and species. So in terms of what's going to be on the quiz, I would just ask you questions about, you know, things being related, being in the same group. Okay? As you do your animal, as you do your invent a life, the most important thing is to go through those six characteristics of living things that are on your yellow sheet, right? Tell about, um, you know, how it gets its energy, its life cycle, all of that. The second thing really important to do 
ecosystem. Where does it live? Where is its habitat? All of that. So living thing and then ecosystem. And then there is a thing about the naming, the naming and the classification. Obviously, somebody was asking me yesterday, they said, well, mine's a cross between a snake and a wolf. So how in the world would I classify that? You could just say it has these characteristics of a wolf, these characteristics of a snake. It's obviously a made up animal, right? So, and you can call it whatever you want to call it. If you wish, if you've gotten everything all done and you want to be a little bit crazy and creative, um, you can use some of the Latin words. Uh, these are just some of the Latin porcine, bovine, ovine is sheep, platypus, platypus, platy means flat, pus means nose or mouth, plateau means flat. Um, so this, I'll leave this up here. I've got paper copies of this. This is just some of the Latin uh, things if you want to. This is kind of an extra. I'm not expecting you to do this. Um, but if you've got everything done and want to be a little creative and crazy, you can give it a Latin name. Okay? Otherwise, living thing, picture, ecosystem. Any questions? Excellent.